And we begin where we started most shows this week, the ongoing saga surrounding the New Harbor Bridge. And tonight we're digging deeper into the report by a third party engineer that found five major safety concerns. Those concerns are the reason the contractor on the bridge, Flatiron Dragados, has less than two weeks to respond. And if they don't, they are out. Tonight, our Taylor Alanis spoke to an engineering professor at Texas A&M Kingsville about those safety concerns. Over the last few days, you've probably heard the word pylon, drill shafts, or piers. For many of us who don't work in construction, those might be unfamiliar terms. To help simplify some of the issues discovered with the New Harbor Bridge project, we talked to this guy. I worked in several, maybe about 10 bridges. Dr. Francisco Aguiniga. I'm a full professor here at Texas A&M University, Kingsville in the Department of Civil and Architectural Engineering. He took a look at the five safety issues listed in a report. The first issue, inadequate capacity of the pylon drilled shafts. The main bridge has those cable stays mm -hmm. and two big towers. Those are called the pylons. He says the pylons have big columns with two legs at the bottom, which are supported by a foundation, a big slab. Underneath that big old slab, there are a series of shafts that are drilled and fill up with concrete and steel. Some of those drill shafts on the edge are experiencing in their analysis greater forces than they could handle. The forces that Guinea guys talking about are coastal bend winds. Two strong winds can cause those columns to sink like a stick in the mud. The second safety concern, deficiencies in footing caps that would lead the bridge to collapse under certain load conditions. So it's like having a whole bunch of toothpicks and then you, you grip them all together. It makes it easier to transfer some kind of weight and distribute it and spread it underneath, you know, to all the elements that are underneath it. The third safety concern, defects connections between two parts, the delta frames and precast boxes. You can increase the strength of those beams by adding some kind of compression force and pressing those things together. And that could be done with pre-stressing. Here is one of the methods that could have been used for those connections for this bridge. I know this looks funny, but pretend this is steel wire. So they would pour concrete in this wire, then they would stretch it until that concrete dries. Once it hardens, they would cut either end of the wire. Then the wire would shrink, compressing that concrete. This is a version of pre-stressing. Aguiniga says the report states the building code calls for this project to have non-compressed steel. Apparently, it did not have all that was needed for that connection. And it was relying more on the pre-stressing mechanism. Number four, significant uplift in the pyres. The bridge could tend to lift up from some of the supports. Number five, excessive torsion and other stresses related to crane placement. And when cranes are located in a certain position and the different uh, segments are being added together, and uh, apparently that could cause also some twisting, that's torsion. Aguiniga says the new harbor bridge is being designed and constructed at the same time. So sometimes the only way to find out if something is wrong with the design is when you're already there. Taylor Alanis, Chris 6 News. All right, Taylor, some great show and tell right there. So TxDOT's executive director, Mark Williams, says there have been several meetings with Flatiron Dragados. Williams says so far the project manager has refused to even acknowledge those safety concerns. Well, I did reach out to Flatiron Dragados today and a spokesperson told me that the company would need to get TxDOT approval before releasing any information related to the Harbor Bridge project. Again, if they don't address those safety issues by the end of the month, TxDOT says they will replace Flatiron Dragados. We'll keep you posted on that.